Alright everybody, this is Lotus Animations, and I'm going to teach you how to do a 2D animation using Blender 3D Engine. Um, I started out on this screen because things are going to get a little bit messy, so here we go. So this is the animation that I made. Really short, simple. Um, it's really derpy, I know. Um, <laughs> But I just wanted to show a little something. This is the first ever 2D animation I've ever made. I actually just figured out this 2D thing. I forgot to do his mouth. <laughs> um, the first ever uh, 2D animation I've ever made because I just figured it out the other day. Um, so what we're going to need are GIMP. You can get it from GIMP.org. And Blender from Blender.org. Those are the two softwares you need. Free. They're amazing. I love them. So... You're going to go to GIMP, and you're going to make all the parts of your character, and you're going to name them accordingly. But to show you how I did that, I'll just do a quick one. I'm going to go to New, do 1920 by 1080. Good. Now you're going to go over here, right click, and do Add Alpha Channel. Then you're going to grab your eraser. Make it real big. Make a, the one that doesn't have the little bits on the end because that causes a little bit of weirdness. And then you're just going to erase all the white. And so basically what Alpha Channel does, Alpha Alpha Channel does, is it makes it to where um, it's invisible. So if I drew something on this, anything that wasn't colored can be seen through. So I'm going to put that back to 20, and I'm just going to draw you guys uh, basically this simple head to show you how I made it its own file and everything. So I'm just going to draw a real quick, really roughly drawn head. So there we go. Let's give him some hair. Okay, and then go back and then we're just gonna fill them in so we'll grab some skin color we'll grab hair color and there we go so there's the head now to make it its own file you're just gonna get the box select tool trace it make it as big as it needs to be you want a little bit of extra on the sides but you don't want it to be super huge then you're gonna do cut and you're gonna do paste as new image. And so now it's its new image, and you go export as, um, and you're gonna make it your own separate folder. I made 2D animation test. And you're gonna put every bit labeled accordingly into that. But I'm not going to, because I already have a head and all of this done. So we'll get rid of GIMP, and I'll show you what your folder should look like. It should look like this. Every piece is there. Um, now we'll go over and do all the stuff in Blender. So this is the startup file on Blender. I'm going to start straight in just like this. To, um, and I'm going to make this easier on you guys. Uh, screencast keys. So when I don't tell you what I'm doing, you should be able to see in the bottom. See, in brings up and takes away the toolbar. So X to delete that cube. And now we're going to go into File user preferences go to the add-ons tab and type in import and you should find this import export import images as planes check that because that's what's going to make this work you can exit out of that now now when you go down to this import you should see the uh, texture thing image is as planes go to your folder select everything now this is the part that's that'll get you. You need to make sure that you click shadeless, use alpha, pre-multiplied, and Z transparent. All of those things need to be there. Now you import your images as planes. They'll all be here. Hit seven to go into top view, and you can. Oh, didn't mean to rotate. Sorry, guys. Seven to go into top view. Now do your shift. Uh, shift. Hold in mouse wheel to pan just mouse wheel to rotate but you shouldn't have to use that too much zero to go into your camera view one to go into front view five to go from perspective to orthographic 
and three to go into side view. Those should be all what you need, or you can just freely do it with your mouse wheel and shift mouse wheel. Uh, scroll in and out to zoom, and it's always right click to select in Blender. Um, left click just moves your cursor, and then you don't really need to worry about that, but if it's freaking you out, you'll do shift S cursor to center to put it back. So now, to put this into the view that we want, we'll do, uh, with all of the planes selected, they come in selected, so you don't have to select them, do R to rotate, X, on the 90, uh, X to do it on the X axis, and 90 to do it 90 degrees. Hit enter, and then they're all flat for you, so now when I hit one, I can see them all perfectly. Awesome. Now, uh, I'm gonna go into this little white ball, and hit texture and now you can see all of our bits and so we're gonna move our camera so that will be control alt numpad 0 to put the camera in the view and then go over to um, now click on your camera then go into this little camera nodule thing and hit orthographic so now um, Everything's flat, you don't have to worry about anything. Grab the scene that you want, I'm just going to pull that one away because we're not going to use it. Um, grab the background that you want, and then if you put it to 9, 1920 by 1080, it will fit perfectly in your camera view after you scale it. S to scale, by the way. Um, and it's best to have a little bit over the edges just to make sure to cover all your bases. In case you don't want to have just an or uh, orange, <laughs> gray sliver down the slide. Side, gosh. It's cold in here, and my lips aren't working. It's snowing outside right now. Um, okay, now that we're here, I'm going to go ahead and uh, build my character. So I'm going to drag this back, because we're going to layer everything. And if you do orthographic, no matter how far you drag it back, it will always be the same size and that's why you want to do orthographic. If you did perspective that would slowly get smaller and smaller. Um, so we're gonna grab the character's head, scale it up just a little bit. Well actually no, scale it down because you want it to sort of match your background. Grab the body, scale it up just a little bit. And then here's where the layering comes in. See, right now they're all together on the exact same plane. Um, and you can see it kind of freaks out if you catch it at the wrong angle, like that. And so if I push it back, that'll fix it. And then it gets to where we want it. So now everything looks more natural. Um, so now we're gonna grab his arm, pull it forward, because we want it in front of the body. Uh, zero to go back to the camera scale it because it's just a tad too big and there we go and then the other arm grab it scale it and then we'll pull it back we'll pull it up those handles are wonderful if uh, you don't know how if you wanted to do it without using the handles it's G to grab the mesh and then move it so there we go there's his arms Here's the legs, which are backwards. I don't know why I made them backwards, but that's no big deal. So um, we'll do R, Z to do it on the Z axis, and then 180. And so that flipped the mesh around to us, but I feel like his legs are a little bit too skinny. So I'm gonna do scale along the X axis. And yeah, that should be good. Pull it back so it's behind his body, and then shift D to duplicate. And there we go. His whole body is made. We're not going to do the bird. Uh, the bird was really lame. I just did that because I needed to have him have something to look at and make facial features to. Here's his eyeball. Um, make sure it's drug out just a little bit so you don't have any problems and then shift D to duplicate along the x-axis. Now we're gonna do all of his mouths and all of the mouths need to be um, 
need to be right on top of each other. They can be layered differently, but they need to be all in the same area. So basically, I'll show you what I mean here. Um, so I'm going to grab the, the big mouth, the derpy mouth, and I'm going to scale this down, pull it forward, might as well just pull this one forward too. Okay, so numpad zero, scale it down, scale this down, put them all to about where they need to be. And I know that seems funny right now, but it'll make sense here in a second. And then we have the shadow. The shadow needs to go um, behind his legs, but in front of the background to make it look like he's actually got a shadow behind it. And the shadow is just a opaque pin with transparency, alpha channeled. Okay, now you have it set up in Blender. You can render it out and it looks beautiful. Um, but to animate him, we're gonna have to... I'm I'm not confident enough to make armatures in a tutorial. I do know how to do armatures. If you guys want to see armatures, I'll do a tutorial on it. But I'm gonna do it the cheaty way. And since we're just gonna be rotating these objects, we'll just make the joints with the origin point. So grab the arm, hit tab to go into edit mode, hit G to grab the mesh, and move that little orange bit, which is the origin point, to where the shoulder would be, and then do tab, and then move his arm back. Now, when we are to rotate, it looks like he has a shoulder there. Wonderful, right? Now we'll do that with every single bit of the mesh. His arm's good there, then we go back into tab. And as you can see, I moved my origin point. I mean the cursor, 3D cursor. Sorry, not origin point. Do that to the legs, to where the hip area would meet. I thought I hit tab, but apparently I didn't. And it's it's good just to rotate it to see if that's how you want it to rotate. Make sure you got your origin in the general area that you would like. The body would rotate along the hip area. So go and the head will rotate along the neckish area like that okay now when you rotate things you see how it just kind of leaves everything else behind and that's not very natural with the body and it makes it harder for animation so I'm going to show you a way to since we're not doing armatures um, make it to where other things will follow so basically like with the facial features um, I can't see the straight line. I'm just going to pull these down so I can see it. Okay. So we're going to grab every feature that's on his face by shift, holding shift and right clicking. And as you can see, it keeps leaving, but like the last one I click will be a lighter orange than the ones I previously kicked. It clicked. And that is because the lighter orange is um, the primary. And so if we make the head the lightest orange and all the other things the darker orange and then hit control P to parent and do object, now when we rot his, rotate his head, everything else comes with it. Sorry, I'm having a really hard time with my words. Um, and now we can do the head and then the body, control P, object, and now when we rotate his body, the head goes with it. And so you're just going to do that with everything. Um, you can do them all at once if you want. I'd prefer to do it individually in case I clicked some wrong thing. Uh, I don't lose all of my progress. So now, uh, oh, let's do the shadow too. Now, when we rotate his body, everything goes with it. And I know that's kind of a pain, but with the um, with the legs because um, you can't really rotate them along his hip really as much. But um, it's for the best because um, when you want to do motion with this guy, say I want him to move, he's out here, I can, well we'll just go ahead and hop in the animation so I can show you. So with the animation what we're going to do is um, we're going to go down here to this little, uh, oops, my hotbar keeps getting in the way, to this little key area, and we're going to hit lock rot scale. And the reason why we're doing that is because if I hit I to insert a keyframe, 
I would get this huge long list and I have to click this every single time but if we just do it like this and I hit I it automatically inserts a keyframe so we're gonna just select every bit of him and then hit um, no we'll just select his body that was right that was right okay so um, now if we grab his body and we move it to wherever we want sorry select the keyframe you want first and then move him and hit I now his whole body will move but if we would have um, not parented the legs we would have had to move his legs accordingly with his body but now because the way we've done it we can just select uh, I I select both legs and so 10 frames we can have this leg rotate this leg rotate 20 frames this leg rotate this leg rotate and you'll just do them frame by frame and because you didn't uh, parent and because you did parent it you don't ever have to worry about location on these legs they'll just follow the body and so you don't have to worry about you can just rotate them you don't have to worry about the positioning which it makes animation a lot easier um, so I guess I'll go ahead and just keep doing the um, the legs until we get to our end point because why not um, I really messed that one up that's okay it's just a tutorial all y'all will figure it out when does the body stop 80 goodness not know I put it for that long my bad okay it looks kind of ignorant right now but um, you know happens and so, and then for this, you'll be just standing. And then you can do his arms when, like, you just gotta think as you're running, this arm will be going forward as this arm goes backwards. This arm will be going backwards. Um, and all that stuff. I did that at just a random frame. <laughs> but, uh, anyway, so you're, then you do his arms too. Um, but say he got to here, we're at frame 80. We'll push these back to where they should be um, and we want to make them want to make them wave so then it'll be up then we'll do a real fast wave so up down up and then down and then we'll have them slowly push his arm back down because no one waved back and he said okay so there we go um so that's a really quick animation now to render your animation i'm going to show you what you need to do um go to your uh scene tab the sorry the render tab and we'll just start at the bottom and work our way up you don't need that, you don't need that. Um, for this, you need to select where you want to put it. So say I wanted to put it here, do, um, sorry, 2D test, accept. Now if you were going to do this in a PNG and then later make it into an image sequence, I would suggest making another folder because you'll get swamped with 150 photos if I do it like that. But if you're going to do a um, movie format, then just do it like that. Hit RGB to get all your colors. Um, then you shouldn't need that, shouldn't need that. This, um, it would, it doesn't matter either. Shading, um, say you wanted this guy to walk out onto a screen that has stuff going on in the background then you would delete this uh, thing and then put this to transparent and then you would when you rendered it out he would be alpha channel and I don't know why that's being so pixelated it's probably something to do with uh, the scale of it uh, maybe if I put it closer it wouldn't be so pixelated or farther away um, but don't worry about that and you might not in also you don't have to uh, have your camera in orthographic. That also might help if you had it in perspective. Um, let's see. No, nope, he's just really pixelated right now. What if I moved him closer? Farther away. 
I don't know. Um, mine was not that pixelated, and your guys's might not either. It might be just how I did it. Um, so now we're back to where we were. Um, put this to 25, and take this 50 and do up to a full 100. Because or else you'll be rendering at half of 920, 1080. And, oh, I forgot to tell you how to do the uh, mouth changes, which are really simple. Um, so, uh, how I did the mouth changes was, we'll go back to frame 1, click his face, we'll go up to our little scene thing, go down to body, find head, open up the head part, and you'll see all the mouths. So, he came in with a straight face, so I will, what you do to do that is so mouth closed I'm gonna hit I over the eyeball and the camera and then for the other mouths I'm gonna click these to make them invisible and then hit I over them as well okay and so now he walks in with a straight face what it will say frame 50 we wanted to lose the straight face so we'll um, make those invisible and hit I and then we want the next frame him to have his open mouth and so we'll make those visible and then he'll have his mouth open so ta-da so that's how I did it and then that's all you really have to do now if I want him at frame 80 to uh, close his mouth then we'll hide and then do the derpy mouth. Oh, oops. I don't want to do that just yet. Next frame. 81. Derpy mouth. Okay. So now, runs along derpily waves. Okay. So that's how you do the animation. To render out your animation, you can either click this animation button or do Control F12 and that will render out the animation. Um, I will show you guys the animation after it renders. All right, guys, it's done. If you want to see it, just go up to render and then do play animation. And um, there we go. It's slightly adorable. Um, I figured out why it was being so pixelated before, and that was because we hadn't turned it up to 100. When you do it at 50, it will give you that really awful fuzzy thing but if you do it at a hundred it looks so much better um, so that was it guys um, if you guys want me to do more tutorials I would be down for that just like favorite and give me comments on what you'd like to see next this has been Lotus Animations and thank you for watching